read Tom Sawyer or Huckleberry Finn here. Okay, virtually everyone in the, the room. But before he became famous as an author, Mark Twain became famous as a travel writer, believe it or not. Before he became famous as a travel writer, he had a varied career. And just before this, he was born in 1835, just before the Civil War, he was a riverboat pilot on the Mississippi. And basically in those days, river, riverboat pilots were the most important person on a boat. They may well be today, except there's no called radar, I suppose. But he had to learn 1,200 miles of the Mississippi, every turn, every sandbank, every twist in the, the river. He said it was the best part of his life, most enjoyable part of his life. In his book, Life in the Mississippi, Mark Twain quoted his mentor, who taught him how to become a riverboat pilot. And the mentor said to him, when I say I learn a man the river, I mean it. And you can depend on it. I learn him or kill him. And Twain went on to say that the word teach is not in the river vocabulary, right? So what I did with the book and with the concept, what Mark Twain learned me about public speaking, is I took some of his terminology, some of his phrasing, and adapted it to today's audience. So, surprisingly enough, the nine lessons that I'm going to give you based on what Mark Twain learned me about public speaking, actually spell out the acronym Mark Twain. Isn't that an amazing coincidence? <laughs> astonishing, astonishing. I don't expect you to remember the nine points from Mark Twain today. What I do expect you to remember though is Mark Twain, right? Acronyms work. So let's have a look now at the first four letters. M message, audience, relate, and know your objective, Mark. This is the kind of work that you should do before you get in front of the public or whoever else you are speaking to, right? The second word, Twain, is what you should do when you're actually in front of your audience. If you don't invest in the time pre-stage, what you will end up with when you get in front of an audience is a Twain wreck. Thank you for that reaction. I told you it was going to be a really corny joke, didn't I? All right. You are, you're taking people's time when you're presenting. You should give them the respect to actually put some effort into your material. Now, let me ask you a question. Which of these nine lessons here do you, and there's no right answer in this. Which of these nine lessons here do you think is the most important when we're talking about public speaking, presenting, or getting in front of an audience? Which would you think is the most important? There's no right answer. Know your objective? Yeah? Okay. That seems to be the general one that's coming out. Know your objective or uh, prep speech preparation. Prepare your, your speech as the other. Message and speech preparation. But I do think there are some simple little techniques that we can come from this Mark Twain acronym that will help you to actually create a more impactful team meeting. So let's have a, <coughs> a look at them. So, all right. So what is the, what is the objective of the team meeting? but it's to help you inform and inspire as general managers. And if you can come out of here with some good ideas that will help you to inform and inspire your team, but the basic point here is that if you know your objective, if you know and you believe that this team meeting really is important, that if I consistently do good team meetings, at the end of the year, I'm gonna get a bigger check. Good team meeting, good restaurant performance, good restaurant performance, good evaluation, good bonus check, etc. So we know your objective. The next thing, let's have a quick look at message and speech preparation. One of the things that Twain did was that, according to his friend William Dean Howells, who's the gentleman on the left here, this is when they were both quite elderly, Twain studied every word and syllable and memorized them by a system of mnemonics peculiar to himself, right? So the best speaker of his generation and one of the most successful professional speakers ever spent a lot of time preparing his material. So what you're doing is you're preparing tomorrow's speech today. That's a simple little thing that can make a, a difference to you. Um, you've also got material obviously from a head office, you've got to communicate, the, et cetera. But the more you can recognize your team members, the more you can give them that high five, the more it can make a, an impact on your team. So do make some effort to message and speech preparation. So involve, inform, and inspire. We said that the objective of the team meeting is to involve, inform, and inspire. 
almost any meeting you're doing in PJs, you're going to have to either involve the audience, inform them, or inspire them. Mark Twain said, when you appeal to my head, I don't feel it. When you appeal to my heart, I do feel it. So if you just kind of are all of the time giving basic facts and figures and uh, pushing your team, they'll hear you, but they may not necessarily connect with you. And there is an African proverb that goes, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I would suggest that there is a danger that sometimes when you're doing the team briefing, you go quickly. It's natural. It's a kind of a trap we'll all fall into. But if you can actually want to go far, try and do it with other people. And what I'm suggesting here, there's a few things that can make a difference to your team briefing. The first thing is try and ask yourself, am I giving a dialogue or am I involved in a dialogue or am I giving a monologue? If you're not asking for a response from your audience, you're going to have a very, very difficult to get a connection, particularly when you're in the same situation five or six days of the week, right? So the best way to you, for you to get freshness into your presentation to your team, the best way for you to get reaction from your team is to try and draw them in to a dialogue. But one of the ways you can do it is ask questions. Some of you may do it, but I really do think that if you ask your team, give me an example of one more experience that happened yesterday. What will happen is you will get examples. You will get uh, high fives of people who've been patted on the back as a result of that. The person who's giving the example of the wow experience is now feeling good because they've been recognized by everyone else. And it's going to be a lot easier than tomorrow when you ask your audience again, give me an example of a wow experience. What you're doing is, you're not the only person talking, the communication is now coming back to you as well. What you're also doing is you are reinforcing the wow element that you're trying to create in BJ's. Words matter. And when you're speaking to your team, if you pay attention to the words that you're using, you can have a really big impact. And really what I'm asking you here to do is to consider using positive words. And guess what? If you go onto this thing called the Googler, right, right, and you do a Google search for positive words, guess what will come up? Positive words, right? Words like amazing, tremendous, fabulous, brilliant, terrific, etc. You start dropping a few of those into your team meetings. And I promise you that within a couple of weeks, if you do it consistently, you will have different team meetings and you will be the only person that will really understand why you've got different team meetings. Why people are coming into your team meeting with a smile on their face, right? All because you deliberately choose to use positive words. Um, and what does the A and the R relate to? Audience and relate, okay? Audience, relate, all right. One of the important things is you gotta know your audience. The more you can relate to your audience before you get on the stage, the better the impact you can have with the audience as well. So, Mark Twain, just speaking about audience, because audiences do, do differ, he said, the country audience is the difficult audience. A passage which it will approve with a ripple will bring a crash in the city. Well, basically what he was saying there was that uh, a fair, then a fair success in the country means a triumph in the city. He basically understood that audiences are different. Right, I want to talk about just getting them laughing for a second. Once you laugh, what does your body do? Relaxes, yeah? Okay, all right. When people relax, they're more likely to take in information, right? So basically, the basic idea behind laughter is that when you laugh, uh, endorphins are released in your, your brain. Uh, you know, I want to clarify something. Some people say that it's actually endorphins, but it's actually dolphins, right? And what happens is that these dolphins, honestly, right? She's looking at me kind of unbelieving. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the very simple things is that when you're doing your team meeting, if you can get them laughing hilariously for three to five minutes, then they will take everything in. No, maybe that's not realistic, is it? No. Darn, all right, I'll get it right. Okay, there must be some other way of doing this. Yes, there is. Um, find some reason to get them laughing or smiling from time to time. I'm not saying all the time, and I'm not saying it's easy, but there are simple tricks that will help you to do it. So, Mark Twain said, Against the assault of laughter, 
nothing can stand. Give me one five-letter word that people do when they hear something funny. Laugh, okay? All right, okay. Uh, laugh. Right. Now, don't tell me the Irishman has come up with an acronym for laugh. <laughs> you have some stories that you tell your friends around a coffee table, or you told some of your colleagues last night that probably had them laughing. Some of those stories might relate to when you actually had a problem, when one of your staff had a problem, or you were able to solve it, or when there was some uncomfortable situation, but now you can laugh about it, right? The more you can expose your vulnerability, I suppose is the word I'm looking for, the more you're going to connect to your audience. And when you create that connection with your audience and with your team, you're going to get them believing in you. They're going to leave informed and inspired. They're going to go and create that wow experience. And when you create that wow experience, it's going to be a positive benefit to everyone, right? So d d one of the ways where they get laughter into a presentation sometimes is think back about sometime you had a little bit of an uncomfortable situation. You can now laugh about it. You will come up with some ideas. All right? So then the other things I would suggest is, in terms of laugh is uh, get onto the Googler. Google things like humorous restaurant stories, right? Jokes about chefs, jokes about maitre d's, crazy newspaper headlines, cartoons, etc. Uh, I mean, one simple little thing you could do possibly for a team meeting from time to time, especially if you've got a bigger one, um, is just take a couple of cartoons from the, the web related to kitchen snafus or something else. You get your team laughing, the dolphins are swimming around their brain, and off they go, right? So, uh, and then the final one is the he, 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 all right? The basic idea when he, he, he is that in the word laugh, the word listen, or the L stands for listen. If you listen for a he, 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 ask yourself, the next time I'm doing a team meeting, or some other time, or can I use it? How can I get that to ho, ho, ho? And you will be able to do it once you do it more than once. The, the pause. Right, well, I'll just the way I phrase this here is that what do cats and dogs have for of? Pause, all right, okay. Very good, all right. Give that lady a high five. Give her a high five over there, hey. All right, okay. I would bet that for most of you, when you're presenting, there isn't even one pause, right? Mark Twain said, the right word is effective, but nothing is as effective as the perfectly timed pause. I wanna leave you with one just final um, thing. I was about anecdote, and Mark Twain spoke about, when he's Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, those characters were effectively created from his own childhood. He didn't come up with them. I want to leave you with just one or two quick little points. Just because you want to be a better presenter, just because you want to connect better with your audience, just because you want to inform and inspire them, does not mean it's going to happen. You've got to go out and get that metaphorical lottery ticket. And one of the simplest ways, and one of the most impactful ways, is if you adopt and adapt the Mark Twain acronym, take it to heart, and I think you will be able to go out and you will be able to achieve what all of you are trying to achieve. Create a wow experience for your team, for your guests, and ultimately for yourself. I wish you the very best going forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you.